Welcome to Katherine Raker's World. Innovation. Culture. Adventure. Fashion and health. Artists. Destinations. Traditions. This is Catherine Raker's World. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of Catherine Raker's World. And let's just talk. Our guests today are Emily and John Goodwin of Galaxy Press. And I have to tell you, they're not only my friends, but I have to tell you, they're the most exciting people you could ever meet. For the reason why is because they have the illustrators, um, writers and, and illustrators of the future with L. Ron Hubbard's program. And they're going to be doing and talking about a big announcement that they're doing today. And I'm just going to let them start talking. So John and Emily, welcome to our show. You're always on. We love you. And let's hear about what you guys are doing. How about that? Thank you very much, Catherine. First of all, thank you very much for having us back on your show again. Oh, you're welcome. Always good to see you again. You always got that amazing, fully energized smile. Like you, you put the ever ready bunny to shame. So <laughs> <laughs> I think so that's tonight, pretty funny. Yeah. So tonight we're re we are releasing um at seven o'clock PM Pacific time. And I guess that would be nine o'clock your time, ten o'clock Eastern time. We're releasing uh, the cover or announcing the cover of the new L1 Hover Presents Rise of the Future Volume 40, which we're very excited about. Right. Um, the cover artist is one of the most popular um, artists, illustrators right now in America. His name is Dan Dos Santos. And this story uh, of his on his cover is um, was written by um, Steve Sterling, S.M. Sterling, who is the foremost alternate history writer in America. Wow. They're both judges for the for the writers and illustrations of future contests, but what's um it's got a really fun backstory too. Emily, when uh, when Dan was here last year, and he went to Librea Tar Pits. Oh yeah, so Dan Dos Santos, he's an illustrators of the future judge. Uh, every year when people win the contest, they fly out to Hollywood. We fly them out to Hollywood for a week long workshop with the judges. And on one of the off times between the workshops, Dan Dos Santos went down to the L.A. Tar Pits. And he was so fascinated by it. And, you know, if you're out in Hollywood, it's one of the things to see. It's not that far from where we're doing the workshop. So he went and visited that and did a beautiful piece. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to give too much away because we're revealing it tonight. But it uh, has something to do with the L.A. Tar Pit. So it and inspired him. Yeah. Yes, it inspired him to do the art for this cover. And it's it's gorgeous. So we're very excited. And that will be releasing tonight. Um, like John said, and it, like he also said, it is the 40th anniversary. So this is a big deal. Four decades of the contest running, four decades of this anthology, and it's still doing very well. Contest grows every year. So we're very excited to be celebrating the 40th anniversary. And one thing about it, too, which we've talked about over the years, Catherine, is that every year we celebrate 12 new writers and 12 new artists who were discovered. And this year we've got winners from eight different countries. Last year we had winners from nine different countries. And the um, what's great about it is that now we're almost up to a thousand winners over the 40 years that we've had. And since the very beginning, um, Owen Hubbard put it in his will to continue funding this, this contest. So all the the flights, the the competition itself, the hotel they stayed at a very fancy hotel. Very in, good prize money. Yeah, in Hollywood, yes. And so they're they're brought out for this. So it's there's nothing else out there in science fiction and fantasy which helps provide that launch pad. And we've got it's not just me saying it. I'm basically saying what other uh, review publications, Publishers Weekly, Library Journal, Booklist, and consumer magazines have said that. You know, nothing has done more for the growth and expansion of science fiction and fantasy writers and artists than the uh, Elwin Hubbard Writers and Illustrators competitions. And because we have 
the, the competition is blind judge. So all the judges will see, and these are the big names in science fiction and fantasy as we've gone over in the past, Catherine, mm -hmm. is um, all they'll see is the story or the art and a number. So they have no idea if they're male, female, nationality, ethnic, religion, anything. It's mm -hmm. just strictly by the, their quality of, of content they win. So when you have, they're all getting together for the first time tonight. So they're all joining us in the, in the live Zoom release. And uh, one thing that's also, the way it works is that the writer winners have their stories and then the illustrator winners, they win because they submitted some works of art. But then they are given one of the winning, the winning illustrators are given one of the winning stories and they're now commissioned to illustrate it. So they will then meet, you know, everybody sees each other for the first time tonight. They won't know necessarily who their artist or their writer is. That won't happen until a special event, which you will be seeing when you come out. I can't uh, wait. <laughs> exactly. But um, what we have, normally you have like a story is written and then the artist illustrates. The cover is, is, is reverse. Mm -hmm. So Dan Dos Santos created the cover art and then we got a, a writer to take that art and use that to inspire a story. So the story that Steve Sterling wrote was inspired by the cover art. So it's a reverse thing on it. So um, it's really, really fun. Yeah. And it'll, it'll be great tonight. And just you see all this emotion too with with everybody seeing the writers and illustrators will see their cover for the first time. Oh, wow. So it, it's a big deal because some of these people have been trying for 20, 30 years to win the contest. So for them, it's a, it's an even a bigger deal that they've finally seen all their efforts come to fruition. And I said, it's, it's, it's amazing. We have people that are, you know, from UK and what's the girl that couldn't make it last year? Romania. From Romania. She's finally able to make it out this year. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. From New Zealand. So we have <laughs> people from all over the world coming in. So they're all tuning in from whatever time of day they are so they can see their, their cover for the first time. That's probably the most exciting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have all your own podcast I hear too, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Rich. So, yeah, Go which ahead. we're going to be doing an interview on when you come out here to Los Angeles. I've got your book, which uh, thank you so much for sending that very, very handsome hardcover book with an. You're very nice one of the book. only ones that got the hardcover book. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to reading it. So I'm fully prepared for when you come out to be able to interview on the podcast because it's um continues to grow and hopefully that helps to even get introduce more people to um the wonderful world of Catherine Raker and the amazing author as well as show yeah. host and creative and I because I, I mean I one thing I've learned about you over the years that we're doing these shows is how important the arts are to you. So that's why there's that 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 sense of reality that common that commonality that we have just makes for a really, really good relationship that we've had. <laughs> You know, the, the thing that I love is you're going to get to meet the co-author and I want you do, to do me a favor. Let Emily read the first chapter. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm, I'm actually doing the audio book. I'm struggling a little bit with it. Not that I haven't done audio books before, but I had to print out everything from the manuscript. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, so, uh, and your voice has to be really clear when you do it. You can't do it, you know, whatever. So exactly. I yeah, I'm just love to figure out which part is autobiographical. That's what I'm interested to, to, to figure <laughs> out and to challenge you on when we do our interview. Okay. This some is of, you. Some of it's true. So I know. <laughs> not, and to guess what's true and what's not. So I will. Anyhow, I'd love for my son to do a sci-fi thing he is so you're gonna love him he's so talented and you're well, gonna get to my like grand mom, yeah, sure you're will. getting to meet my grandchild too who is right there in california and uh this is i haven't seen him in about five years wow so well, it's gonna be exciting kind of that you're coming out for this yeah, yeah. we're very excited to yeah. see yeah. you in the flash finally after all these years yeah well the funny thing is is he is got different things on his with his cell phone that's going to help me on the red carpet so, oh, you know, excellent. yeah all right so anyhow too bad bill didn't get to come that's the way it goes though <laughs> the way that's the way yeah we were just down at the event venue yesterday and we were scoping out where the red carpet was going to be and everything so we're ge we're getting there we're getting ready for the event 
Yeah, yes. I'm getting ready for it too because I'm so excited. I'm looking for a dress right now that's going to sparkle like crazy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I can't look, I can't look the... matronly. There's no way. No, no, that's not. <laughs> that's a... one of the nice things that you come to this event. You know, you have these amateur authors and artists from all over the world. They're in some town. Some of them have never been on a plane before because they have to be amateur to enter the contest. And they're coming out to Hollywood for this experience and they're going to do the red carpet and go to a big gala event that's like the Oscars. It's going to be it's so fun. It's so exciting. And, you know, and for them, it, it's a wide open field. Anybody can enter because it's free to enter. They also maintain the rights to all their works. So even they can take their stories that we're publishing in this anthology and send them elsewhere afterwards, which they often do. So it's a real win-win. It's almost like too good to be true, but it was set up in such a perfect way, so smart that it can still be going 40 years later. So yeah, very Mr. exciting. Hubbard still, he's, I said he still funds it, you know, millions of dollars later. It's still yeah. being funded by Well, him. you know what? He's got the perfect couple and the perfect <laughs> team, seriously, to do Thank you. this wonderful work because really it inspires people to be creative. Yeah, that's yeah. what I do. And that's why... Tonight, even if you yourself are not a, um, even if you're not even a science fiction or fantasy fan, to come here and see writers and artists being able to, you know, mm -hmm. shine, you know, we're shining the light on them, on the artists. And that's what this is about. And so it's, it's, it's very, for us, it's very rewarding. You know, it's just, you have no idea who the people are because all they're being judged on is their story, not their personalities, not anything. So, when they come out, you just meet the, the most wonderful people, all kinds of people, you know, mm -hmm. but for them, the story is such a driving part of their life or their art is such a driving part of their life. It's, that's a point in common that we can share. So with with um, Rise of the Future, it's about that. It's not about politics. It's not about uh, what country you're from, what your ethnicity is. It's just straight about the art and and the storytelling. And so that's what it's, that's what helps it grow every year. You know, yeah. like I was so, so surprised with the podcast that now I get over 2 million listens per episode that it's because wow. we stay true to that. We stay true to that. <laughs> I need to hook up with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's, I think that we've been doing this for a long time now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I have to tell you, interviewing some of these wonderful people and these illustrators and, and, and also writers are just so exciting. They're so yeah. fun. They are. And, yeah. You know, until you actually take pen and typewriters or not typewriters, but computers and start writing, it's not easy. It's no. not. And it's not. And we get so many submissions. We don't say how many, but it's thousands every quarter. I mean, there are like a lot of submissions every year to this contest. So they have, it's real talent that's coming in here and winning the contest. And it's amazing because, because it's a blind judge contest means it's like, they don't know who's entering. We, there are no, like, you know, this judge or that judge. So you're going to get in. It's, it's like, no, the judge never sees the name of, of the story or the piece of art that comes in, but it's really neat because anybody can enter. So They'll all arrive in Hollywood and they'll be anywhere from the ages of 16 to 75 or more. And they're, you know, this one over here is a student. This guy over here just came out of the military or an active military or, you know, there's a veteran, there's a lawyer, there's and they all come out here and they all become best friends. And um, it's really just such a great experience. Now they stay for a week, right? Is they that do. Correct? For a week, yeah, yeah. Because what happens is they win the contest. Now we know they know how to write or they know how to draw or paint, whatever their method is. And um, they come out here and the judges of the contest, there's about 20 active judges on each side of the contest for writers and illustrators. And they're the best, they're the top in the field. They're best sell New York Times bestselling authors or illustrators that are doing just some of the works you see. You go through the grocery store, you're going to see their work on the tea boxes. They're just everywhere. They're like the big top names or they're doing all the movie posters or whatever. So um, they come in and they do a week long workshop with these judges, not so much about the craft because we know that they know how to write and draw already, but how to actually make it in the field. Like, how are they going to make the business out of it? How are they going to be 
coming now from amateur to professional. So they get a whole week workshop teaching them everything they know from going to conventions, doing media to how to promote themselves. If it's an artist, how to do your portfolio, how to present yourself, how to work with an art director, all these things so that we anything that we can do to help launch their careers. Right. And that's and what start I, tonight with our cover reveal. Yes. The discovery deal. Now, tonight is tell me a little bit about tonight before we have to say goodbye today. So it's going to be at seven o'clock Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern. And then um, I guess Central is going to be nine o'clock. And um, what we have here is Dan Dos Santos will release his, his cover. Mm -hmm. And we have a little video that is going to be able to do the ta-da. And um, then he'll talk about his inspiration for it. Steve Sterling will talk about, you know, the creation of the story that he wrote against that. And then you'll see all the, the winners will be, they'll have a chance to come on and they'll talk about what their reaction was to it. And then we'll open it up because uh, we have almost 200 people registered right now for it. Um, and yeah, it's a virtual event that'll be on Zoom and people can register for it. If you go to the Writers of the Future Facebook page, there's a way to enter, register there for it. Uh, also, it will be streamed live, right? On Facebook. Yeah. It'll be streamed live on YouTube, and then it'll be on the Writers of the Future page on YouTube, but then it'll also be linked to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But if they want to go right now to Writers of the Future, um, it, the uh, Facebook page is at uh, WOTF Contest. So like for Writers of the writers Future, WOTF, not WOTF. WOTF. Dot com or what? For Facebook, it's just at just WOTF Facebook. Contest. Okay. And then you can have the link there to sign up for it. If you miss being able to sign up, because you have to pre-register in order to get in there, because we, we try to control so we don't have anybody, any unwanted visitors coming in. Okay. My question is, if I wanted to see it, could I see it? Yes. Yeah. So um, if you'd like, I'll send you the link to it directly so that you can okay. see it. We'll do that right after this. I'll send you the link. And then... Um, and what time is it again? What time is on Eastern? Eastern is 10 p.m. Oh, good. That's good. Yeah. And it'll, the, la the event lasts about 40 minutes total. Okay. That's yeah. great. I'm excited. And anybody who wants to see it live that's watching, you can go to YouTube, uh, Writers of the Future page, and it's going to be streaming on YouTube. Right. And then, you know, if you miss it and if it's late where you're at, you can always, we'll be reposting it on at the Writers of the Future YouTube page, and it will be posted on the Writers of the Future, Writers and Illustrators of the Future Facebook page. Okay, so I know you've got a very important important next call. So we're going to end it now. I want to thank you both for joining me and taking time out of your busy schedule to come on Catherine Raker's World and Let's Just Talk. And we'll be tuned in tonight. So thank you so much for joining me. Can't wait to see you. I'm <laughs> so you excited to see you in the real Oh, in the real? Yeah. I'm in the real. real. <laughs> Thank, All right, you take care. Thank you so much. You have a okay. wonderful, wonderful event tonight. Thank you and very much, Catherine. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, bye-bye.